This is really exciting. It's like opening a bottle of vintage champagne, only I think it's a little bit better. <laughs> Considering its age, it uh, probably dates from around 1480, so all things considered, it, it survived rather nicely. It's beautifully sculpted piece, too. There's real sophistication in the carving of the stock. This is a masterpiece of late Gothic decoration. It was bought in 1909, so it's one of the earliest acquisitions in, uh, in our European Arms and Armor collection, and it turns out to be one of the most important. It's a composite bow, which means that the bow here, typical of central European bows, uh, mostly German and uh, Swiss and Austrian, have a bow lath, which is uh, made of wood, horn, sinew, glue, and in this case, covered in parchment. The tiller, this part is shaped, it has inlay of bone. Here we have the nut which is a carved piece of bone, which uh, arrests the, uh, the string when it's drawn back. And this is one of the great inventions of the late 1300s, early 1400s. This is what is known as a kranequin, a winder, a rack. In German, it's called eine deutsche Winde, and it is a rack and pinion gear. It's a kind of winch, allowing the archer to draw the bowstring smoothly and easily. Without it, he'd need to pull back the equivalent of 158 kilograms of weight to load the bow. The Kranequin reduces that weight to three and a half kilograms. We slip the bridle over the tiller and we advance the toothed rack here until it grips the string. And then by turning the handle, the string is drawn back until it slips into the nuts. You should hear a kind of click, which indicates that uh, a little spring inside is holding the nut in tension. Uh, then what you do is you take the rack off the tiller of the bow. The string will be back here. You put a bolt or quarrel here in front of the string, and you pull the trigger underneath. What happens in the late 1400s is that firearms begin to take over. The crossbow becomes obsolete as a weapon of war and uh, it becomes relegated to sport and hunting. And it would really be great if we could get an x-ray of the side so that we could actually see the inside workings of the trigger. The level of detail is... The level of detail is just amazing. It's a very, very simple mechanism because there's, there's the trigger, trigger lever, this is the sear, and there's the nut, and uh, the nut has a little notch so that uh, the, the sear locks into that notch. And when the string is pulled back, the nut will rotate and the string rests against it. And then when you push the lever, of course, what happens is that uh, this section goes down and the string goes that way, and the bolt or quarrel is discharged. Who would have imagined that after 530 odd years, somebody would actually see the inside of a gear case, gearbox that has never been analyzed before?